Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I know I've been missing my Training Thursday episodes as of the past couple weeks, really giving you updates on the global-based pandemic, the virus that is circulating still through the world. And I have given you those updates. Hopefully, you've checked those out the past two Thursdays. Of course, you can find all previous podcasts at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. That's stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. They are all there for you. What I wanted to do, and I will get back to my Training Thursday-based shows, but I want to share with you one of the most important and overlooked foods, supplements, and nutrients all in one that most people could and should be using right now in order to improve their overall longevity. I'll explain why in just a moment. Boost their immunity and maybe even help burn some body fat as well. I couldn't find a day of the week where I wanted to to work this in. There's obviously so many topics that I continue to want to bring you. And today I wanted to share with you the amazing benefits of one superfood that you'll most likely be able to get right around the corner in your local health food store. I'll also share with you one particular brand that I've done a lot of research on and that I recommend as well. So the nutrient, the supplement, and the food is none other than honey. Now, before we just think all honey is created the same, it's not. So if you are using a cooked honey, or if you're using any honey that does not say raw on it, you are not getting the benefits of honey. And even more so, and I'll get into Ayurveda as well, because Ayurveda has been big on honey for over 6,000 years, and I'll share with you how we used it when I was over in India and Sri Lanka as well as a way to get nutrients shuttled in the body as what we call a Trojan horse. So here's the thing. Honey is the only sweetener, the only uncooked sweetener that's going to retain its enzymes, and that's extremely important. That is different from the majority of other sweeteners out there. So some of those enzymes are called invertase, diastase, and glucose oxidase. And what they do is they actually allow for the honey to be absorbed at a much better level. They keep the honey pure while it's in its container. It does not need to be refrigerated. It's most likely not going to go bad. And it may actually benefit our health as well. One of the things that you should know, because people right off the bat are going to say, well, honey's very high glycemic. It's going to throw off my blood sugar levels, etc. Well, let's keep in mind, and let's really look at honey in general. It has a glycemic index of quite low of around 32 all the way up to 85. Well, that's going to be higher. Table sugar or sucrose is going to be between about 60, 65 or so to 110. So we're really looking at double or I should say half. We're looking at half the glycemic index of your typical sweetener out there. I'll share with you how I use it in just a moment. But a full tablespoon of honey, and that's a full tablespoon. Most people aren't going to be using a full tablespoon, nor do I recommend it. That's 17 grams of sugar. Now, the sugar is actually converted by the bees from a sucrose to a glucose and a fructose. Now, that means that it's going to have a different glycemic response, okay? So if we're looking at a teaspoon of raw honey, we're really looking at just about five grams of sugar. That's important to look at because when you're taking in five grams of sugar, we're not going to be looking at a lot of blood glucose change. That means that if you are starting your day and you're a little lower in glucose and you take in five grams of honey on a teaspoon, we'll talk about how to use it in just a moment, you're probably not going to see a dramatic spike in blood sugar. You're really not. I mean, it's five grams total, right? So, and the way that you're able to check for yourself too is to simply use a glucometer and be able to check right at home. 
But let's get into some of the massive benefits that honey can bring you. First and foremost, I have to let people know, and this is where we get into all of these different, I would say, well-meaning, I don't even know if that's a word, but let's go with it, well-meaning but uneducated debates on acidity and alkalinity. So you have to understand, some of people's favorite natural health foods are highly acidic. And if you want to talk about apple cider vinegar, raw apple cider vinegar, again, it has to be raw, or you want to talk about raw honey, we're talking about a highly acidic food. I mean, if you want to talk about kiwis and other foods, we're talking about acidic foods, pineapples, right? So, but why would there be benefit to that? Well, let's go into it. So honey has an acidity of about between a three and a four. It's probably a little on the higher range of a three. Now, anything below a seven is not neutral, so it's going to be more acid. Once you get into the threes, well, it's naturally highly acidic. Well, what does that mean? Automatically, it means antimicrobial, typically antifungal, and typically antibacterial. So this is why honey has been shown to work quite well for bacteria in the esophagus, bacteria in the mouth, bacteria in the stomach that shouldn't be there. It has actually been shown to kill that type of bacteria. I've used it with, in my own family for bacterial overgrowth in the stomach with one of my daughters. On a podcast, we can't provide you with a diagnosis, a treatment, or a cure, but we use it, at least in my family, I could share with you for H. pylori and other based stomach-based issues. Also, my daughter, she got sick with some type of, we'll call it stomach bug, for lack of a better name, virus about two weeks ago. She was throwing up for two straight days. Now, obviously, if you've ever had a child or you've been around anyone that can't hold down water, they can't hold down anything, you, of course, get very worried for them. So, and again, you should seek medical attention when you feel appropriate for your family, right? So for us, I dealt with this before, understand what my daughter needed. And if, of course, it went into a third date, then I would, was going to bring her to a specific doctor that would be able to help with this. So here's what we did, though. We used Manuka honey. We used some raw cinnamon. We mixed these things together. And she was taking a little bit of that honey and cinnamon mixture, just a little bit, held it in her mouth, and let it absorb through those capillaries, swallowed it down into her stomach, and we gave her uh, just a basically one to two teaspoons of water that she could hold down with a little bit of colloidal silver. And we did that every 30 minutes. I had a timer going, and my wife and I gave her a little bit of water. Of course, she wanted more. We gave her just enough so that she wouldn't throw up that mixture. If she threw it up, we started the process again. Another half hour, just the same amount. If she did well, we try to give her just a little bit more. Give her a little bit of fruit, she might throw that up. So you have to, again, work with these specific things, and I'm not giving you a treatment protocol for this. But honey is one of those things that we did use, and by the end of the second day, obviously, I'm very grateful. My daughter was doing quite well again. And then if you've ever seen anybody, the next, they're just totally wiped out. They're totally exhausted. But if you ever see someone the next day or 48 hours later, the amount of food that they want to consume and the amount of liquid is unbelievable. <laughs> so we had to actually hold her back from herself. And it took about 48 hours to really put that water weight and, and good weight back on. But again, I'm just giving you one anecdotal based assessment of this. But the acids actually inside of the honey are called acetic acid, butyric acid, lactic acid, oxalic acid, succinic acid, tartaric acid, peruvic acid. I won't go on, but basically citric acid, all of these things have been actually shown to be preferential in terms of killing certain types of bacteria. But it doesn't stop just there. Let's say you're someone dealing with high cholesterol. Well, there have been a number of studies showing that raw honey may improve cholesterol and, and uh, the process of atherosclerosis. So what we saw in those studies was that total LDL, which we consider the bad cholesterol, was reduced while raising good cholesterol. And in one study, for example, in 55 patients, so yes, a smaller study, but if you compare honey to table sugar, they found that honey caused a 5.8 percent reduction in bad cholesterol and a 3.3 rise in good cholesterol and a modest weight loss of 1.3 percent. Pretty good, right? And that's for the honey only. Okay. So what I want to share with you is also in triglycerides. Ten people typically look at cholesterol and triglycerides on a lipid panel altogether. And what we found was that since the triglycerides are very specific to the liver 
and they're specific with most foods, if triglycerides should raise, right, tri triglyceride levels should go up with the fructose and the honey, and they should also go up with sugar, right, because that's typically what happens on a highly refined processed carbohydrate diet. Triglycerides will go up. Well, multiple studies, four that I have, linked regular honey consumption with lower triglyceride levels. Pretty impressive, right? Right. So not everything is equal. Not every calorie is the same, right? 20 carbs from, let's say, wheat flour or just flour in general is not the same as 20 carbs from broccoli. Very, very different. And so table sugar is not the same as honey. We actually saw in one study, honey compared to sugar, well, it found 11 to 90% lower triglyceride levels in the honey-based group. Let's move on to one of the other top causes of disease and mortality, and that's high blood pressure. Well, the antioxidants that are plentiful in honey have been linked to lower blood pressure, right? So those people and rats in people showed a modest reduction in blood pressure by consuming some honey. So I don't want to get too much into type 2 diabetes. I'm not recommending raw honey or a lot of sugars until you get your blood sugar back really in control. But the power of the antioxidants are great there. Two other factors that honey is being used for right now specifically Manuka honey as well. I've done a whole podcast or a Friday review, I should say, on Manuka honey. I'm going to have my team link that up today. It's a very specific type of honey, mainly coming from New Zealand. There is a specific K factor number, a 12 or a 16 is typically what we look for, but that might change in the future. So if you head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1644, what I'm going to do is link up a couple articles, a couple research studies, and my previous podcast on Manuka honey. I'll also link up some of my favorite sources for Manuka honey as well. Raw honey can be found locally. We'll go over that in just a moment. And I'm also going to link up to Dr. James O'Dell's article. I believe he has an article, at least I know I read it in the past, on honey basically as a medicine. Speaks a little bit about Ayurvedic medicine in there. I sit on the advisory board for the Bioregulatory Medicine Institute, and James O'Dell, Dr. James O'Dell, is the founder of that. So, great article. Let me go over two more benefits, okay? Two more big benefits. People with duodenal ulcers or ulcers in the stomach, as well as that first part of the small intestine, gastric and duodenal ulcers, have been shown to see benefit from using raw honey or manuka honey. The other is with wound healing or burns. So we have to understand is that nature can mimic a lot of what we already know has been created in a lab. So for example, hydrogen peroxide. Some people would put hydrogen peroxide on a cut to kill the bacteria, kill anything that's in there. When you apply a raw honey or a manuka honey to that wound or cut, whatever it might be, or burn, it acts as or creates the same agent as hydrogen peroxide, which is essentially an extra oxygen-based molecule. And that's coming from nature. That's coming right from this Manuka honey. So if my daughters get a mosquito bite and they end up picking it a little bit, which we tell them not to, or they get a cut, we'll apply some, we'll clean it first, no doubt about it, but then we will apply some Manuka honey to that. So it's just another way that you can use it. And it's being used in hospitals right now as well for burn-based victims to help that skin regenerate faster and to cause less infection since that's a big issue with burns. So super important to look at these things. I want to just share with you how we used it in Ayurveda. In Ayurveda, it's actually used in multiple different ways, and that's because it's considered what's called a sattvic-based food in Ayurveda. So it's a pure food. It's one of the highest foods out there. So if you look at yogis, if you look at vedyas, they're going to use honey as part of their, their diet. They're actually going to use that. I mean, that, that's going to be part of their nutrition. And in Ayurveda, it's considered a sweet, astringent, and pungent food, slightly warm in its nature. That comes partly from its acidity as well. And it's actually okay for all doshas, even the kapha dosha, which we have to be a little bit more careful for in terms of um, higher glycemic-based foods. But I want to share with you one more way that I use it in fatlosity, especially for body types that put on some weight. So anybody that purchases fatlosity, it's not just a... 25 scientifically studied and backed nutritional supplement formula that's been proven to work and we guarantee it. So besides all the 25 studies and everything great that went into it, the first ever day and night formula, 
that we actually give, I put together a course with that. So Fat Loss Hit is a complete weight loss and body transformation system. And with that, I teach a specific drink to drink each morning. And that includes some apple cider vinegar, that includes some raw honey, and a little bit of lemon squeezed in there as well. Well, we do that for many different reasons. One of it is to be able to neutralize the stomach, whatever's in the stomach, to be able to get those digestive enzyme space working, and also to get the bowels moving as well. So it helps to balance, helps with balancing the natural pH of the tissues in the body. It works on breaking up mucus. It moves the lymphatic system, which holds a lot of fats or can't, you know gets blocked up by fats. There's a lot of nutrition, and it acts as a natural uh, emollient and tonic as well. So really good for breaking up mucus in the body, moving that lymphatic system, especially with that apple cider vinegar. Now we're only using a teaspoon, maybe two at the most. So we're really keeping that at 10 grams or less. That's the maximum. Typically, when people start our program, we're just using one teaspoon. And you can use one teaspoon twice a day as well. You might even use it post-workout. That's a nice way to get it in too. So how we use it in Ayurveda for medicine, beyond just what I spoke about with the fat loss city-based system, is that we used it as what's called, or now called, the Trojan horse. They didn't call that back in the day. But if you want your cells of your body to soak up a specific nutrient, you can actually mix some honey with it. We did this in two ways. One, we use ghee if we wanted to be used as a phospholipid or a lipid. So now we see things that are, we call them liposomal, right? Well, again, Ayurveda, if you study Ayurveda, now it's a lot, right? You don't learn Ayurveda in a year. But if you study Ayurveda, you'd be shocked at how they were already doing these things 6,000 years ago. Well before liposomal glutathione, liposomal vitamin C, all these liposomals were around. I was in India learning about these things and I was being taught by these great vages, these great doctors about how they use these with these people. They would mix ghee with certain herbs. We would mix that. We would roll it up into a little bit of a what looks like a capsule, but it was simply just herbs rolled up in a ball. We would add them to certain tonics. We would also use certain nutrients as well with raw honey. Raw honey act as an agent to be able to absorb it better into the cells. So as a phospholipid, a fat, it gets better absorbed by the membranes. And as a sugar, all, well, the majority of cells in your body, including your brain, use glucose as a nutrient. And so we'll uptake that, hopefully, with some of those herbs as well. And we saw a tremendous benefit from that too. So I wanted to bring this to you today because you can use a powerful and natural antimicrobial antifungal, antibacterial, something that's going to help the immune system, that's going to help your overall health by simply taking a teaspoon a day. It can help with allergies. It can help with asthma. And when I was trying to get overcome my own allergies, which were absolutely debilitating, I started at the tip of a teaspoon of raw local wildflower honey. Why did I do that? Because the wildflower honey that's local, let's say around Massachusetts, contains a lot of the pollen in the air as well. Now, I was allergic to grass, mold, pollen, dust. I mean, I could go on and on. I was allergic to my environment. I literally needed to be inside, especially during three weeks in April. So our spring season. So what did I do? As part of, obviously, I had to heal my gut. I had to get rid of the candida, get rid of the H. pylori, get rid of the bacterial overgrowth, seal up the gut wall, work on my histamine levels, reduce histamine loads in general. But I also used wild, raw, local honey. And by doing that and just starting with just the tip, because my mouth would get itchy just putting that small amount in there, I had to work on slowly desensitizing my body and taking in a little bit of that pollen at a time. Well, over time, I could work up to two teaspoons a day, and I'm still an advocate of, of using myself about one to two teaspoons on a near daily basis. Not every day. I, I don't want to say that I use it every single day now, but certainly I'm a, a big proponent of that. And one day, I hope to actually have my own bees, my own have my own hive, be able to work with the wild flowers and the pollinating, all that great stuff. I'm just not at that point right now, don't have the property to be able to do that. But this is something that you can buy locally. And I simply, whether I'm in Maine, whether whether I'm in Massachusetts, I can buy raw, wild, local honey. And we also always have a bottle of Manuka honey as well because Manuka honey 
has a really high level of immune boosting and other antimicrobial-based properties. So I'm going to link up the Manuka honey episode. I'm also going to link up some, I can't really link up wildflower honey local because it has to be local near you. So look for a local farm or look for a local natural health food store. You should be able to get a bottle in there. Honey's not necessarily expensive at all. It's going to last you a while. You don't need to keep it refrigerated, again, because it already has that lower acid base level. And it's going to potentially do a whole lot for your health. Not a lot of harm there. So again, you can mix it in a little bit of warm water. Can't be heated, right? So no boiling water. If you're mixing it in with tea or if you mix it in with coffee, I've, I've actually spoken about this before. It actually has beat cough medicine on a one-to-one, mixing it with black coffee. Go back, check out a previous podcast on that with Manuka honey, but you can just mix it in with coffee as well. Don't make it boiling though. You don't want to kill all those great enzymes, okay? So Simple to do, mix it with water, put a teaspoon right in your mouth, do it post-workout, put it in a smoothie, whatever you want to do. Get one teaspoon in a day. If you want to work up to two, that's great too. And again, I think you'll find a lot of benefit from this. So much so, I wanted to dedicate an entire show to it. I really think it could be that great for your health. Very little downside, a whole lot of upside. That's why I want to share it. Do feel free to share this with friends, family, whoever that you could believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning in. And for all the details, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1644 for today's show. Take care, everyone. Have an amazing day. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.